We are here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Amy Hino, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So tell us where, where, the, where you work, what school you work at, and tell us what you teach. So I teach at El Camino Fundamental High School in the San Juan Unified School District, and I teach a creative writing elective, and I also teach honors English for sophomores and I teach AVID and I'm the AVID coordinator for our school as well. Okay, well we'll talk about a couple things. We'll talk about AVID later because I'm okay. always excited to talk about <laughs> AVID. Me too. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about English. Um, and again, what grade levels you said? Sophomore? Sophomores. Sophomores. So, so what, are you, what are you reading these days? What, what, are, what are students reading at that level? So we do have some whole class novel units. However, we've really moved away from doing whole class units to much more um, independent reading. So I have a huge classroom library, about a thousand books, and students get to pick, pick books of their choosing based on their interests, their reading level, um, things that they may want to challenge themselves or learn about. I have nonfiction and fiction. So students are reading books of their choosing throughout the entire year. And during the year, I conference with them one-on-one -on -one to see how they're meeting their reading goals that they set for themselves, maybe challenge them if they've been reading nothing but romance novels, you know, mm -hmm. try to break them from that and um, get them into a new genre or a new author. Uh, if they've been hitting a rut and just not really into their book, then I kind of coach them out of that book and talk about other books that might be more interesting to them. Um, <clears throat> and then some of our shared units are not really novel focused anymore, but they are genre focused. Mm. So for example, we have a, a dystopian unit that the students love because dystopian literature is very popular right now. Mm. Um, so we read a variety of short stories that are dystopian and we look at the characteristics of a dystopian society and we look at also either how humanity is taken from individuals or how they try to retain their humanity. And then they get into literature circles and read books like Ready Player One, The Road, mm -hmm. um, Handmaid's Tale, which is also very popular right now. So there's a real wide range from uh, YA to maybe even some classics. Absolutely. Yeah. We do one Shakespeare play, we read Othello, which is fantastic because it's all about rumors and betrayal and I mean, what's more teenager Relatable than to that? Relatable high school. <laughs> yeah. right? So we do, we do that one. And then I also have a Holocaust unit where we read Night by Ellie Wiesel. And then we mm. learn about the Holocaust. We have survivors speak. So I kind of have moved away from just teaching the novel to teaching genre and teaching reading skills. And also pulling in not just other non-fiction, uh, but also non-fiction into all of the different units. So they're getting a little balance of both. So in 10th grade creative writing, the students are really trying to express themselves. So my creative writing class is open to predominantly juniors and seniors, and but I do have some sophomores that take it as well. Um, and with the creative writing class, we look, students are reading every day because like Stephen King said, to be a reader, you have to be a writer, or other way around. Yes. <laughs> and then um, we also look at mentor texts. We look at a wide variety of short stories, poetry, nonfiction, arguments, things like that. And then students are practicing those same skills in whatever it is that they choose to write. So there's a lot of choice and freedom in the creative writing class as well. Mm. It must be exciting for you as a teacher to see a student kind of where the light bulb goes off when they're doing creative writing because it really they really feel like they, they have a they have a creative voice. Absolutely, and not all students choose to take this class either. There are many that need another elective and the counselor places them and they don't see themselves as a writer. And so my job is to kind of take down those preconceived notions that they have about themselves, that they're a bad writer. And one of the first things that we do is we talk about all the variety of genres and formats that there are in writing. And they, of course they go to like MLA, APA essays and I say okay well we're not doing any of that in here and it's like this huge sigh um, of relief yeah. goes throughout the whole classroom and I have students that write podcasts I have students that write screenplays um, novel chapters you know the wide the whole variety so in creative writing you let them uh, use their creativity mm -hmm. so whatever they choose so let's talk about AVID mm -hmm. and how you apply the concepts in that type of a class mm -hmm. So we focus, I am 
I have had seniors for probably about four years. I had seniors, and that is the pinnacle of the AVID program where I get to help them apply to colleges, apply and complete their FAFSA and scholarship essays, things like that, prepare for that next step of what college is really gonna be like, the, the transition from high school to college. Um, and I noticed a lot of my seniors were coming in with some of the same things missing from their earlier years. They didn't have enough community service to really be competitive for a scholarship. Um, they didn't have some of those foundational uh, note-taking skills or understanding why they were doing AVID or, um, good study habits you know they just kind of came in and went through the motions so I decided to go back and teach freshmen and get them right when they first come to school and it's been so great going from the seniors down to the freshmen because I get to teach them all of those skills that I really want them to have mastered by the time they are seniors and also I get to meet all of the kids in our program and see them so that when they get up, because normally I would just meet them senior year, and okay, great, we have a year together and then they're off. Now I get to know them for four years. And so that's really, really exciting. Um, and a lot of what we do in AVID has spilled over into, just naturally into my English class. So that's teaching, wondering. organization, yeah. Yeah. note-taking skills, Socratic seminars, um, just really putting students in charge of their own learning has been, and also, the family and community element of AVID has also really changed my, um, my English classroom. I mean, doing team building and community circles and having students really listen to each other, feel comfortable, so that when we're leading a Socratic seminar and they have a divergent point of view, they're confident enough to share it and the class is respectful enough to listen to it okay, and consider so, it. So you might be a little biased in this answer, so, but let me ask, when you're combining AVID with creative writing, how does that develop, help a student develop as a critical thinker? Because you've got the creativity and the organizational skills. Well, I, so for a long time, I stopped doing narrative writing in my English class mm -hmm. because there was this huge focus on argument writing and that's what students mm -hmm. need to be doing and it's gonna prepare them for college. But we were also getting very bland, boring arguments and they didn't have that, those narrative techniques. So having the balance of the, the college readiness skills, um, the discipline needed as well that are uh, reinforced in AVID, but also the element of creativity is going to lend to better work, better writing. And I mean, if students are more creative and thinking, that's gonna make them a much more competitive college applicant and successful college student or um, worker and citizen, mm -hmm. you know, not only to be able to think critically, but also to think creatively and outside the box. So, so um, as far as uh, professional development goes, how, how valuable is that, you know, not only with AVID, but with, with English, because, you know, there's always an innovative push in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. So I taught night for three years and had really no Holocaust education background. Mm -hmm. I was focusing on it as a text. Um, and so I attended a workshop that our union provided with a group called CV Hen, their Holocaust educator group. And it was six weeks and I learned so much because I had never learned about the Holocaust in high school or even in college. Mm -hmm. And so it started my journey in, I need to learn about this so that I can help my students understand it because they always have questions about that text. How could this happen? Why didn't people run away? And then they're baffled when I say, well, and people believe that this didn't happen. There are deniers out there. How can they believe this didn't happen? Mm -hmm. So building my own experience and educational background so that I can share and answer those questions with students and also just understand that I don't know everything. So I attended their workshop. I went to the UC Davis History Project, spent time doing that, and I went back to CV Hen, and then I became a fellow, so I am a, I teach um, with okay. CV Hen, and I lead workshops for teachers around the, the valley. Um, I've even presented at Kate, at our California Teachers of English Conference, and teaching teachers how to bring in Holocaust and the topics of the Holocaust and genocide into today's classroom and why it's so important to teach empathy and understanding and the critical thinking that goes with understanding this this huge topic. Empathy, understanding, critical thinking, mm -hmm. um, all those that are aspects that they need 
as absolutely, adults. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And so I think that professional development is huge that we not only have to find something that is going to help us with whatever unit we are teaching, but also that what I have found to be the best leader, um, the best professional development is often led by teachers sharing their actual classroom experience, which is why I value my work with the history, uh, the writing project, because it is teachers bringing what they do in their classrooms. I'm learning from kindergarten teachers, second grade teachers, what they do, and I, I can adapt it to my high school classroom mm. and bring it in there. So I think that learning from our colleagues has been very valuable to my own experience. And I think that that's really valuable for new teachers mm -hmm. as well, hearing and learning from the veterans and helping each other out. Well, we've, we've learned from you and we've appreciated spending <laughs> some time with you. We've been speaking with Amy Hino, who is one of two teachers of the year for the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.